G'day guys, I'm Dean from Blog for the Blood God. And I'm Dalton from Risky Rollers. And we were able to get our hands on an early release codex of the Chaos Demons. Mm, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be going through that with you guys today, and we're going to be basically previewing the codex in its entirety. Now, this video is going to be broken up into four sections, one for each Chaos God. So we're going to be going through all of those. So if you're watching this video and you're like, oh, this is all just Slanesh stuff, where's my corn love? Make sure you check out the other videos on my channel because we're going to be breaking it down to try and make it so that we don't have one four hour long video, right? Make it Absolutely. digestible. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, we're just basically going to be going through and reading it. We're not going to be providing too much opinion and too much commentary because it's going to take a little bit of time to sort of digest all these changes. Process and the it, new rules, try it out, you know? uh, get it on the table and uh, really fuck some guys with it. So, yeah. yeah, so uh, if we're going to start with just a uh, general sort of preview. Um, and then once we've digested it a little bit and we've got some feedback from you guys and we've got some community ideas going around and you know some ideas happening, we'll then be doing some more detailed tactical content. We'll jump on the Risky Rollers channel, do some battle reports with these boys. So got a lot of demons on the way. So yes, there's gonna be some really interesting content coming out soon, but for now, this is a preview of the Chaos Demons Codex. Let's get into it. Walk for the blood god. All right, guys, welcome back to our Chaos Demons preview series. We're going to jump straight into Zinch now. If you haven't seen them yet, we've already reviewed Slanesh, Nurgle, and Korn. So this will be the fourth Chaos God that we'll be reviewing. So we'll jump straight into the points costs. I'll go through our HQs now. So first up, you have the Blue Scribes. He's only 90 points. Then the Change Caster. He's 80 points, and for five extra points, you can give a Staff of Change. Changeling is 100 points, the Fate Skimmer is 140 points, and for 5 points you can give it a Retinue of Horrors, and an additional 5 for a Staff of Change. You've got the Flux Master, he's 110 points, 5 points for a Staff of Change. You've got Karyos Fate Weaver, 320 points. And then you have a Lord of Change, who is 300 points. For 10 points, he can take a Baleful Sword, and for 10 points, he can take a Rod of Sorcery. And then he also has the Exalted Abilities, which are the Architect of Deception for 35, Master Mutator for 30, and Nexus of Fate for 20 points each. Over in Troops, you have Blue Horrors, which are locked to 10 models per unit for 70 points, and Pink Horrors for 10 models per unit for 150 points. Interesting that there's no Brimstone Horrors as a purchasable unit anymore. Hmm. Then we go into our Elites slot. We have the Exalted Flamer. He's 75 points of pop. And Flamers themselves, three to six models in a unit for 25 points each. In Fast Attack, you have Screamers. These are three to six models in a unit for 30 points per model. And then finally, we have Heavy Support. You have the Burning Chariot, which is 120 points. And for an extra five points, you can give it a Horror Infestation. Uh, so now we've got to scroll down and find our uh, Zinch-specific Warp Storm abilities. Where are we? Here we go. So there's the Deluge of Fire. That's four Warp Storm points. Use this effect at the start of your shooting phase. Until the end of the phase, improve the ballistic skill characteristic of Legione's Demonica Zinch models from your army by one. Very nice. You also have the Sorceress Winds ability for three Warp Storm points. Use this effect at the start of your Psychic phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a Psychic test is taken for a Legione's Demonica Zinch unit from your army, add one to that Psychic test. And then finally, you have Rampant Mutation. It's uh, three Warp Storm points. Use this effect in the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a Legionnaire's Demonica Zinch model from your army makes a melee attack, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts a one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. A unit can only suffer three mortal wounds as a result of this effect per phase. I feel like that's the first cap we've seen at something other than six. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Uh, now we're going to scroll, scroll, scroll until we find the Zinch data sheets and stuff. All right, here we go. We are... Is that Zinch? Yep. Yeah, that's Zinchy. What's this? So uh, it's also Zinchy. All right, so we go into the Exalted Lords of Change is the first one. So again, you can uh, upgrade as many 
lot of changes as you want with this, but you can't use the same exalted ability more than once, and there's only three, so you can effectively only upgrade three. We can only take three, so. Uh, so your first one is the Architect of Deception. So now this is 35 points. Uh, each time a ranged attack is made against this model, subtract one from the hit roll. Fair enough. You then have Master Mutator for 30 points. At the end of your psychic phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit that suffered any mortal wounds as a result of a psychic power manifested by this model this turn. On a 2 plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. Cool. Mm. Nice. Then you've got Nexus of Fate. This one's only 20 points. In your command phase, if this model's on the battlefield, roll a d6. On a 4 up, you gain a command point. That could be quite spicy. Yeah. I think demons want command points. Yeah, it's mm. good. Now we'll go into the Zinch Stratagems. So we have the first one is a 1 CP stratagem called Minions of Magic. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Horrors core unit is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a ranged attack is made by a model in that unit, an unmodified wound roll of 6 changes the armor penetration of the attack to negative 3. Mm. You then have Burning Warp Fire for 1 or 2 CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Flamer's unit is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with Flickering Flames or the Pink Fire profile of Fire of Zinch that targets an enemy unit that contains 11 or more models. When determining how many attacks that model makes for that weapon, count results of less than 9 as 9. Ooh. If that Flamer's unit contains 4 or more models, this stratagem costs 2 CP, otherwise it costs 1 CP. Alright, next up we have Warp Jaws. 1 CP, use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Screamers or Fate Skimmer or Burning Chariot unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, each time an attack is made with the Lamp Free Bite or Screamer Bites by a model in that unit, add 1 to the attack's wound roll. Cool. Magical Boon for 1 CP. Use this stratagem at the start of your psychic phase. Select one Legiones Demonica Cinch Psychic Unit from your army. That unit can attempt to manifest one additional psychic power this turn. Extra powers are always good. Speaking of extra things, we've got a 1 CP stratagem for an extra relic. And Very nice. The same as every other warp god. You then have Warp Portal for 1 or 2 CP. Use this stratagem in your movement phase when you select a Legiones Demonica Zinch character model from your army to make a normal move. Instead of moving it as normal, remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches from enemy models. If that character has the Herald keyword, this stratagem costs 1 CP, otherwise it costs 2. It's pretty spicy, just teleporting around the place. Flames of Mutation is a 1 CP stratagem. Use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Select one horrors unit from your army that had any models destroyed this phase. Select one or uh, sorry, select one enemy unit with an engagement range of that unit. Roll a d6 for each model in that horrors unit that was destroyed during this phase. For each roll of a six, the enemy suffers one mortal wound. The unit can only suffer a maximum of six mortal wounds this phase from the result of this stratagem. Finally, blasted standard for one CP. Use this stratagem at the start of your psychic phase. Select one Legiones Demonica Zinch Icon unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, each time you make an unmodified psychic test of 9 or more for a friendly Legiones Demonica Zinch Psychic unit within 12 inches of that unit, the closest enemy unit within 24 inches of and visible to that selected unit suffers one mortal wound. Alright, so it's no surprise here that the Zinch armies are going to be shitting out a ton of mortal wounds. Makes sense. All right, let's talk about their unique psychic discipline called Pandemoniac. That's a fucking <laughs> awesome name for a fucking discipline. That's like three like jammed in it's puns pan- together. <laughs> it's so good. That's so fucking <laughs> awesome. If whoever at GW wrote that, fucking I tip my hat to you. Well done. All right, so first off we have Boon of Change. So it's a blessing. Warp charge value of 6. If manifest, it's like one friendly Zinch unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Roll a d6 until the start of your next Psyche phase. It gains a relevant bonus from the table below. D3, I see you roll a d3. On a 1, you add 2 to the movement. On a 2, you add 1 to the strength. And on a 3, you add 1 to the toughness. 
If the result is a nine or more, you can select which result happens instead of rolling a d3. Cool. You then have Bolt of Change, which is a witch fire with a warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to the psyker and roll 9d6. For each 5 plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. For each model destroyed as a result of these mortal wounds, that unit suffers one additional mortal wound to a maximum of three. These additional mortal wounds cannot generate any additional mortal wounds. That's a worth, big worth pointing out, this is not capped. You could suffer... 12 mortal wounds from this. Well, yeah, because you roll... Yeah, you could roll nine. If you roll all nine of them as five pluses, you're going to get nine mortal wounds plus an additional three from the... Three models that you yeah. presumably kill. That's uh, pretty spicy. <clears throat> Next, you've got Gaze of Fate. So it's a warp charge value of seven if manifested until the end of the battle round. If this Psyker's on the battlefield, you can retain up to two warp storm points. Cool. You have Treason of Zinch, which is a malediction with a warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to this Psyker. Until the start of your next psychic phase, that enemy unit is not affected by the aura abilities of other enemy units. A cool power, but I'm kind of sad that old Treason of Zinch is gone. Yeah, I'm kind of sad that old Gaze of Fate is gone. It's, uh, oh well, it is what it is. I'm sure there'll be some extra spice in here. Oh yeah. Uh, we've got Infernal Flames is a uh, blessing. So it's a warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select a friendly Zinch core unit within 18 inches and visible to the Psyker until your next Psyker phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, add one to the attack's wound roll. Nice. Finally, you have Infernal Gateway. This is a witch fire with a warp charge value of eight. If manifested, the closest enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to this Psyker and each other enemy unit within three inches of that enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the result of the psychic test was 12 or more, each affected unit suffers three mortal wounds instead. That's pretty spicy. Mm. Let's look at the old Zencho Warlord traits. The first we have Born of Sorcery. Add one to the psychic tests for this Warlord. Nice and simple. Cool. Incorporeal form. Each time an attack is made against this Warlord, subtract one from that attack's wound roll. Poof. Put Oof. that on a big old Lord of Change. Uh, we got Fractal Mind. If, if this Warlord attempts to perform a psychic action in your psychic phase, it can attempt to manifest one psychic power in the phase without that, faction, uh, that psychic action also failing. Cool. Solid. Warp Tether. This Warlord has the Warp Locus keyword. And this Warlord has the following ability. Warp Tether is an aura. While a friendly Legiones Demonica Zinch unit is within 12 inches of this model, each time a morale test is taken for that unit, you can re-roll the result. That's actually really interesting because there are sometimes you actually want to fail. Mm. And Warp Locus is, isn't bad at all. Yeah. Like, in fact, Warp Locus is amazing. So that's yeah. going to allow you to deep strike within essentially six inches away from your opponent, yeah. which is really powerful. But I actually think that that ability to re-roll morale tests, morale tests, I think that's actually mm. going to be surprisingly powerful because you can use that to pull casualties in the morale phase so that you're no longer engaged in combat, which makes it really difficult for your yeah. to pin you. That's true. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get stuck back into it. Uh, Law Keeper of Zinch is uh, each time this warlord successfully manifests a psychic power from the pandemoniac, <laughs> like I love it, <laughs> discipline, <laughs> Add six inches to the range of the psychic power, and if that psychic power specifies more than one range, uh, add six to the first range specified. Yep. Uh, then finally, Tyrant of the Warp. This Warlord never suffers perils of the warp. Each time this Warlord would lose a wound as the result of a mortal wound, roll 1d6 on a 5+, plus. that wound is not lost. Mighty spicy, that one. Mm. All right, let's talk some relics. We have the Endless Grimoire. Uh, so this is a psycho model only, and you can attempt the following action. At the start of your shooting phase, the bearer can start to perform this action. The action is completed at the start of your next command phase. If completed, it's like one psychic power from the pandemoniac discipline. Until the end of the battle, the bearer knows that psychic power in addition to any others it knows. So it can basically mm. pull out a book and learn some new shit mid-game. After casting that turn. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Then you have the Impossible Robe, 
Once per phase, when a saving throw is failed for the bearer, you can use this ability. If you do so, the damage characteristic of that attack is changed to zero. Not the first failed save. Yes, that's Once a very, very, phase. very uh, important distinction there. Off the top of my head, I can only think of one other instance of this. Yep. Uh, of it working this way and not being the first failed save. Mm. Yeah. That's very good because it means they can't just like fish for bolter wounds to try and force that one fail through. So that's yeah. fucking good. Uh, next, we have the Ever Stave. Psycho model only. Each time the bearer attempts to manifest a witch fire, power, or smite on an unmodified psychic test of nine or more, the power cannot be denied. Hmm. Warp Fire Blade. Select one melee weapon the bearer is equipped with. Add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon. Each time an attack is made with that weapon, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. And that weapon is now considered a relic. Cool. Now we have Soul Bean. That's a sick name for a weapon. Yeah. Soul Bean. We have this thing at work where we have our, each team member has their own scanner. Yeah. And most people have their name at the top of theirs, but there's a couple of us that have like named them. Like one guy's <laughs> called the Widowmaker and like, this is our weapon. <laughs> I'm totally going to work and changing mine to Soul Bean. That's a sick name for a weapon. Anyway, you guys didn't, uh, Click on this video to listen to me talk about my work. <laughs> Bullshit. You want to hear about the, uh, you want to hear what Soulbane does. Uh, so model equipped with the Rod of Sorcery only. This relic replaces a Rod of Sorcery and has the following profile. It's a 12 inch range, Assault 3d3, Strength 6, AP2, 3 damage. Yeah, fine. Then finally we have the Soul Eater Stave. Psycho model only each time an enemy model is destroyed by a mortal wound inflicted as a result of a psychic power manifested by the bearer. Roll 1d6. On a 4 plus, the bearer regains one lost wound. The bearer cannot regain more than six lost wounds in each psychic phase as a result of this ability. Cool. All right, let's dig through some data sheets. So, first we have Karas Fate Weaver. So, it's 12 inch move, 3 inch, uh, sorry, 3 to weapon skill, ballistic skill. Strength 6, Toughness 7, 22 wounds, uh, 5 attacks, it's got a 5 up invulnerable save against combat, and a 3 up invulnerable save against shooting. Very nice. Or, so I shouldn't say invulnerable, demon save. Super invulnerable save. But still, 22 wounds with a 3 up save, that's pretty spicy. So he's got a Staff of Tomorrow, so you can't use it today, only tomorrow. Uh, is melee a Strength 8 uh, AP3? 2d3 damage. That's actually pretty good. That's alright. Uh, and abilities wise, he's got the Demon Lord of Zinch, which is a reroll hit rolls of one aura for six inches. He's got one head looks forward each time the psychic test is making for this model. Add the current battle round number to the result. Ooh. And then, mm. so one head looks forward, and then his other ability is called one head looks back. Uh, once per battle, when your opponent uses a stratagem, uh, excluding the command roll, re-roll stratagem. Uh, you can use this ability if you do so until the end of the battle, the CP cost for your opponent must pay for that is increased by one. Mm, cool. So he's a bit of an assassin, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then he can manifest three psychic powers in your psychic phase and deny three psychic powers. And so. knows all of them. And the, oh yeah, he knows smite and all of the powers from the pandemoniac discipline. Nice. Then the generic version, the Lord of Change, moves 12 inches, hits on threes in shooting and combat, is strength six, toughness seven, with 20 wounds, five attacks, and a five plus in melee and a three plus at range. It comes stock with a Staff of Zinch, um, which is just gonna be hitting at strength six, minus two, three damage, but uh, may also be equipped with either a Baleful Sword or a Rod of Sorcery. The Rod of Sorcery is a 12 inch Assault D6, Strength 6, minus 1, 2 damage weapon. And the Baleful Sword is a melee weapon which will hit at Strength 7, minus 3, 3 damage with Malefic 3. So 3 additional attacks. It has the Demon Lord of Zinch Aura, so 6 inches of reroll hit rolls of 1. And a Master of Magics. Each time a Psychic Test is taken for this model, add 1 to the result. Sorry. Uh, as written here, add one the result. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If this model has 10 or more wounds remaining, add two to the result instead. Uh, it can manifest three psychic powers, deny two, 
No smite and three powers from the Pandemoniac Discipline. That's pretty spicy that when he's at full wounds, he's adding two to his psychic yep. tests. And there's a, a way to get another one from uh, one of the Warlord traits as well. Yeah. So you can make him casting pretty reliably. With all the buffs to uh, Zinch casting on nine pluses as well. Mm. Mm. All right, let's talk Changeling. So he's got a six inch move, weapon skill four, blisk skill three, strength three, toughness five, <laughs> five wounds, two attacks. He's got a five up in melee, three up at shooting. He's got the Trickster's Staff, which is each, uh, it's a strength three, AP zero, one damage attack. But each time the bear has selected to fight, you can make one melee weapon. Wait, hold up. Each time the bear is selected to fight, you can select one melee weapon, an enemy infantry model in engagement range of the bear is equipped with. Until the fight is resolved, this weapon has the same profile as the selected weapon. So you go into somebody with a black mace and you'd be like, I'll take that. Thank you very much. That's, that's very cool. <laughs> fucking Jesus. <laughs> uh, but he is only weapon skill four plus, so he's yeah. fucking gay. Uh, anyway, ability wise, we've got formless horror. Each time this model is selected to fight, you can select one enemy infantry model with an engagement range of this model. Until the fight is resolved, this model has the same weapon. Oh, okay. There well, there you is. go. I'll take it. I take it back. He takes the same weapon skill strength. And attacks characteristics of that selected model. Hmm. And attacks characteristic. Wow, the Changeling's crazy. Uh, he also has Herald of Zinch, which is uh, a six-inch aura of a reroll wound rolls of one. And is, he can um, uh, attempt to manifest one and deny one. Is Abaddon an infantry model? He is. Interesting. I mean, if you're going up into Abaddon, you're. I mean, unless Abaddon's near somebody else and you can take Abaddon's Drachnian and hit the Terminator unit. That's pretty spicy, but yeah. uh yeah, yikes. I, I just like the idea of being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have the Fate Skimmer. This uh moves 14 inches, weapon skill four, bliss skill three, strength three, toughness six, nine wounds, two attacks, with a five plus three plus demon save. It comes stock with a ritual dagger and screamer bites. The Ritual Dagger is a strength 3, minus 1, 1 damage. The Screamer Bites are strength 6, minus 3, 2 damage with Malefic 6. Uh, you may replace the Ritual Dagger with Staff of Change, and it may take a retinue of horrors. The Staff of Change is 18 inches, Assault 3, hitting at strength 7, minus 4, 2 damage. And the Retinue of Horrors adds 1 to Psychic Tests taken for the Bearer. Um, it has the Herald of Zinch Aura, so friendly Legionis Demonica Zinch core units within six inches of the model may reroll wound rolls of one. And Fate Skimmer, in your command phase, select one friendly Screamers unit within six inches of the model until the start of the next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. It can manifest two psychic powers, deny one, and those two. All right, next up we have the Flux Master. The Master of Flux. He is the Master of Flux. So he's got a 12-inch move, weapon skill 4, blue skill 3, strength 3, T4, 6 wounds, 2 attacks. He has a 6-up and a 3-up. So hmm, he's only a 6-up okay. in melee, so he's not as tough. Uh, he's got the same Staff of Change as an option he can take. Uh, this doesn't actually replace one of his weapons. He can just take it in addition. Cool. Uh, he's got a disc, so he's got disc blades, which is one additional attack that he makes at strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. And he has a ritual dagger as well, which is going to be strength 3, AP 1, 1 damage. He's no good in combat. Do you think disc blades are just bay blades that Lords of Change launch across the battlefield? <laughs> yes. In fact, I want to make one where you pull the cable and the guy spins and goes nuts. <laughs> Uh, so he's also got a few abilities here. So he's got the Herald of Zinch, which is reroll wounds of one in a six inch aura. And the Flux Master, which is in the command phase, select a horrors unit within six inches, and they get uh, hit rolls of six automatically wounds. So it's more or less the same. It's just a bit faster and then a little bit slightly different, but yeah. Mm. The Blue Scribes move 12 inches, weapon skill four plus, blue skill four plus, strength three, toughness four, five wounds, two attacks, five plus, three plus demon save. Uh, their disc blades are uh, Malefic 1, Strength 4, AP 0, Damage 1, and their sharp quills. Okay. <laughs> their, their, their pens. <laughs> strength 3, 0, AP 1, Damage. Down in their abilities, they have 
Pteryx Sorceress Siphon, which is an aura. While an enemy psychic unit is within 12 inches of this model, you subtract one from psychic tests taken for that unit. And each time a psychic test is failed for that unit, that psychic power is siphoned. And until the end of that battle, that unit cannot attempt to manifest that psychic power. Period. Oof. Psychic actions are unaffected. So, yeah. wow. Oof. Okay. I mean, there's the, the interesting thing to note here, and I don't want to go too deep into it, but it's while an enemy unit tries to cast a psychic power within 12 inches of you, right? Yeah. Well, why the fuck are they, like, if you move, they're just going to move out of that 12 inches range, then do their casts. But then you're forcing them away from casting it stuff at your does, units. It does mean that. And it also means if you, like, tag them in combat, they can't fall back and cast. And if they stay there and cast, they risk losing their power. Yeah. So, and there's multiple ways to get negatives to cast yeah. powers in this book. But uh, you, interesting. Yep. They also have... Uh, good luck, mate. <laughs> I'll try and read this. <laughs> okay. Um, zero... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? Xerat Sorceress Barrage. Spelled X I R A T apostrophe P apostrophe S. Xerat Pss. Xerat Sorceress Barrage. At the start of your psychic phase, you can resolve each of the following effects once in any order. Roll 2d6 and select one result. This model can automatically manifest the psychic power from the pandemoniac discipline that corresponds with that number. This model, if this model successfully <clears throat> siphoned any psychic powers in the previous enemy psychic phase, using the previously mentioned ability, it can automatically manifest the smite psychic power. Okay. Automatically the, manifest, as in cast, and it automatically goes off. I believe that's what it says here. Yeah. These powers are considered to have been manifested with a role equal to their warp charge value. There you go. I should have just and they let you cannot finish. be denied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Classic 40k player, right? You read the first part of the rule and then you jump to wild assumptions. You don't finish the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, the blue scribes isn't a psyker and does not inherently know powers. That is interesting. So you could run this in a more or less corn list. Yeah, like, I mean, he has got the Zench keyword, but, but not Psyker. He's not a Psyker. Interesting. Mm. All right, Change Caster. He's a uh, six inch move, weapon skill four, ballistic skill three, strength three, T4, five wounds, two attacks, six up, three up for his things. He's got Staff of Change, which is his assault three, strength seven, AP four, two damage. He's got Ritual Dagger to give him Neg 1 in melee, uh, which he can replace with the Staff Change. He's got a Herald of Zinch Aura for a 6-inch Aura of Reroll 1s. And he's got the Change Caster, which is the unmodified hit rolls of 6 automatically wound the target, which he can pick a friendly unit within 6 inches. And he can also manifest 2 powers and deny 1. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Over in Troops, we have Blue Horrors. So these are locked to a unit size of 10. Uh, they move six inches, weapon skill five, plus skill four, strength two, toughness three, one wound, one attack, with a six plus, four plus demon save. Uh, they're all equipped with Coruscating Flames. 18 inches, assault two, strength three, AP minus one, damage one. Uh, now these have the Capering Horrors ability. So they cannot perform actions and can never gain the objective secured ability. And they have the split rule. Each time an enemy unit shoots or fights after resolving those attacks, if any blue horror models in this unit were destroyed as a result of those attacks, but this unit was not destroyed, make a split roll for each destroyed model. To make a split roll, roll 1d6 on a 4 plus that model splits and you can add one Brimstone Horror model to this unit. When doing so, that Brimstone Horror model cannot be set up with an engagement range of any enemy units unless those enemy units are already within engagement range of this unit. So that's how splitting works now. Yeah, I, with when no I, when mention I first, of reinforcement points. Yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, no re reinforcement points, that's busted. That's going to be so strong. But the problem is, is there are only 10-man units of toughness three guys. And then Brimstone like, Horrors, which the profiles here as well, because they're not their yeah. own data sheet anymore, 
Uh, movement six, weapon skill five, weapon skill four, strength one, toughness three, one wound, one attack, six plus five plus saves. Yes. So, so they're mm. bad. Annoying. And the fact that they can't there, have but... obsec and they can't do actions. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck even are these things? Yeah. Maybe they're backfield screens. But outside of that, they serve almost no purpose as yeah. far as I'm concerned. They're, Unless you want to use cheap, them though. to try and tie up your opponent and stuff like, like that. They're like seven points each. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's talk pink horrors. So they actually have four profiles here. You've got the pink horror, the iridescent horror, the blue horror, and the brimstone. So the iridescent, I believe, is like your squad sergeant. And then you've got pink, blue, and brim. Right? Yep. Uh, so we've touched on the blue and the brim. So let's just talk pink. So you got a six inch move, weapon skill four, ballistic skill three, strength three, toughness three, one wound, one attack, uh, six up save and a three up against ranged attacks. They've got the same coruscating flames, so it's gonna be hitting you at strength four, AP one, assault two at eight inches range, 18 inches range. It's got a uh, demonic icon instrument, uh, and then it's got exploding horror as well. This unit only contains blue horror or brimstone horror models. It cannot do actions and loses obsec. And then it's got the same split roll, yep. which is basically every pink horror or iridescent horror that splits, you can add two blue horrors. And then for each blue horror that splits, you can add one brimstone horror. So I think the pink horrors are the way to go. You're never going to be taking a unit of blues. You're just going to take a unit of pinks and then mm. just get your unit of blues for free as your pinks get killed. That checks out. Uh, but yeah, cool. Fair enough. Then we have Flamers. Flamers. So these are in units of three to six. They move 12 inches, weapon skill four, ballistic skill three, strength five, toughness four, three wounds, three attacks, with a six plus three plus demon save. They all have flickering flames, which are a 12 inch assault D6 plus three flamer, which will be at strength five minus two, one damage um, when they hit. Yeah. So yeah, they're Automatic good. Automatic hit, it's not bad. The exalted flamers, on the other hand, have a 10 inch move, weapon skill, ballistic skill three, strength six, toughness five, five wounds, four attacks, six up in melee, three up in shooting. Uh, and they have the Fire of Zinch, which is uh, blue fire, is 18, assault 3, strength 9, AP 4, 3 damage. And pink fire is 12 inch range, 2d6, strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage, which automatically hits. Uh, they also have some abilities here. They've got Manifestation of Destruction. Uh, this model can never have a Relic or a Warlord trait, because it's worth noting that this is a character. Yes. And it is a character of five wounds, so it can be protected. They also have Blazing Warp Fire, which is while a friendly flame is units within six inches, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with flickering flames, the attack has a strength characteristic of plus one. So it'll make them strength six. Kill. All right, then we have Screamers. These are in units of three to six, move 16 inches, hit on fours, strength four, toughness four, three wounds, three attacks, with a six plus three plus demon save. Their weapons are lamprey bites, uh, which are hitting at strength six minus three AP and two damage. Oof. A couple of abilities as well. They have riders of the immaterial winds. Each time this unit advances, you can instead remove this unit from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. And slashing dive. In your movement phase, after this unit makes a normal move or advances, if you did not set this unit up again using Riders of the Immaterial Winds, you can select one enemy unit this unit moved across as a part of that move. Roll 1d6 for each model in this unit that moved across that enemy unit. On a 4+, plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Cool. Burning Chariots are up next. They got a 14 inch move, they got a weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 6, toughness 6, 9 wounds, 4 attacks, they got a 4 up save against melee and shooting. Mm -hmm. They have fire of zinch, which is the same as before with a blue and a pink fire, so assault 3, strength 9, AP 4, 3 damage for the blue fire, and 2d6 shots at strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage for the pink, which automatically hits. 
Then in melee, they have the Screamer Bites, which is uh, strength six, AP three, two damage, and they get to make six attacks with that. Uh, they can also take a Horror Infestation, uh, which while an enemy unit's within 12 inches of that model, subtract one from psychic tests taken for that unit. Uh, and then ability-wise, they have Blazing Warp Fire, which is basically the same before as where Flame is within six inches of this model. Each time that model makes an attack with Flickering Flame, that unit has a strength characteristic of plus one. Cool. So that looks like the end of the Zinch rules. Hmm. So some interesting stuff there. We're going to jump into the Undivided rules now to round out this... Uh, brief series of previews on the uh, new Chaos Demons book, so please join us for the next video. If you haven't seen the Slanesh, the Nurgle, and the Corn ones that we've done so far, make sure you head over and check those out, and uh, we'll be back soon. Walk for the Blood God. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that section of my Chaos Demons Codex preview. Now, I wanna say a huge shout out and a huge thank you to Dalton from the Risky Rollers team for coming over. It's currently 2.30 in the morning and he spent the whole night here helping me go through this codex and bring this preview to you guys. So I wanna say a huge thank you to him. And I also wanna say a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You can sign up for only a dollar a month and that allows me to continue doing these things and it motivates me to not only stay up till 2.30 in the morning recording these videos for you, but it also motivates me to pressure my friends like Dalton from Risky Rollers to come and help me record these things until 2.30 in the morning. So a huge thank you to Dalton, a huge thank you to my Patreons, and make sure you check out the next video coming up in this series. I've gone through and I've done one for each Chaos God as well as one for the Undivided and the Disciples of Bellicor. So there's going to be a few videos coming out over the next couple of days. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of them. And with that being said, I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Do your objective markers ever get lost behind terrain or other models and become difficult to see? Do they ever get bumped and accidentally moved during a game? And do they ever spark arguments about distances? Well, not anymore. Introducing the blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers. Made from the same material as astronaut suits, or maybe military equipment, or probably neither of those things, this two millimeter thick neoprene synthetic rubber is tear resistant, water resistant, and is designed to last. But that's not all. The blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented neoprene objective markers come in a variety of different designs and styles to suit any faction represented in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These objective markers are a perfect gift for yourself or a friend and are a perfect way to flex and show your opponent that not only are you a smarter, cooler, and better 40k player than them, but you also have more disposable income than they do. For the low price of $25, you'll get not one, not two, but six neoprene objective markers, perfectly designed for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, People who sign up on Patreon to support Blog for the Blood God as a Skull Champion tier $5 per month member will gain access to a custom design service where I will design a unique logo to support their gaming club like the one I did to the left here for the Potato Farmers local gaming club here in Melbourne. Follow the links in the description of this video to pick up your set today.